here is a wise virgin from among the number of the prudent, who went forth with lighted lamp to meet Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Clare, the foundress of the Poor Clares, and basically the, the female counterpart to the movement started by St. Francis in Assisi. And so I was glad this morning in the sacristy that, say, that Father John, in his Franciscan life, has this chasuble of the Franciscan uh, seal and the Franciscan cross on the back, so, so we can show that greater honor to St. Clair on this, her memorial. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who in your mercy led St. Clair to a love of poverty, grant through her intercession that following Christ in poverty of spirit, we may merit to contemplate you one day in the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord God said to me, As for you, son of man, obey me when I speak to you. Be not rebellious like this house of rebellion, but open your mouth and eat what I shall give you. It was then I saw a hand stretched out to me in which was written scroll which he unrolled before me. It was covered with writing, front and back, and written on it was lamentation, lamentation and wailing and woe. He said to me, Son of man, eat what is before you. Eat this scroll. Then go, speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he gave me the scroll to eat. Son of man, he then said to me, feed your belly and fill your stomach with this scroll I am giving to you. I ate it, and it was sweet as honey in my mouth. He said, son of man, go now to the house of Israel and speak my words to them. The word of the Lord. How sweet is my taste is your... How sweet to my taste is your promise. How sweet is my taste is your promise. How sweet to my taste is your promise. In the way your decrees I rejoice as much as in all riches. How sweet to my taste is promise. Yes, your decrees are my delight. They are my counselors. How sweet. The law of your mouth is to me more precious than thousands of gold and silver pieces. How your decrees are my inheritance forever, the joy of my heart they are. How sweet. I gasp with open mouth in my yearning for your commands. How sweet. Alleluia, alleluia. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The disciples approached Jesus and said, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a child over, placed it in their midst, and said, Amen, I say to you, 
unless you turn and become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me. See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I say to you that their angels in heaven always look upon the face of my heavenly Father. What is your opinion? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray, will he not leave the ninety-nine in the hills and go in search of the stray? And if he finds it, amen, I say to you, he rejoices more over it than over the ninety-nine that did not stray. In just the same way, it is not the will of your heavenly Father that one of these little ones be lost. The Gospel of the Lord. At the Basilica of St. Mary of the Angels in the valley in Assisi, that, that basilica is built over the Portiuncula, that little church, one of the little churches that St. Francis rebuilt. And then that was the little church where St. Francis and his brothers spent most of their life. But in that whole complex of all of the things that are in that basilica of St. Mary of the Angels, you know, that, that chapel where St. Francis and his brothers prayed, the chapel where St. Francis died, and, all of the, and the rose garden and all of these things, the last time that I was in Assisi, what drew me most was actually in just one hallway that's kind of leading off towards, I think it was the museum or the gift shop or something like that. But in this one hallway, there was painted fairly recently a series of murals depicting the life of St. Clair. They had to have been done. I wasn't sure exactly why they were done. They might have been like, it's to celebrate an anniversary of her death or something like that. But I was so struck by these particular paintings. They were so beautiful. And now I beat myself up every single year because I try to go back on Google and find these pictures. I can't find them anywhere online. <laughs> and so now I beat myself up that I didn't take pictures of them. But I still remember what I saw and still remember what drew me about these paintings. And it was particularly the first two paintings in this whole series of the life of St. Clair. The first one was on that night when Claire was 18 years old and she had snuck out of her father's house and her family's house and she came, comes from a well-to-do family. She comes out with all of the, her finery and her good robes and jewelry and all of this and she holds out a hand tentatively towards Francis who is reaching out towards her to draw her out of the world and into this life, this movement that Francis was establishing with his brothers. And the look on Claire's face is just this pure look of excitement and wonder, and at the same time, this kind of fear of the unknown. Like she wants to follow and be drawn after where Francis is going, and yet there's kind of this fear of the unknown. But then it comes to the next painting, which is just later on during that night, when St. Francis cuts Claire's hair, which was the crown of the woman at that time. And to, have the, to cut her hair was to symbolize that she was cutting herself off from all of the world. And then the, the, the friars are praying around her, but the look on Claire's face in that painting, as Francis is cutting off her hair, is just this look of freedom and victory. That she is free from the worldly life that she would have been caught up in with her family. Now she gains a victory over the world as she follows Francis into this life of truly pursuing Jesus Christ with all of her heart and giving herself completely over to the love of her bridegroom and king, Jesus Christ. I think of this as I hear Jesus Encourage us, invite us, unless you turn and become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You see, in Jesus' world, children were completely looked down upon. They had one of the lowest levels in the social spheres. The world basically despised children. The spirit of the world wanted nothing to do with children. But Jesus turns that on its head as he says, you turn and become like children. And he's saying that when the world looks at you like that, you are free from the world. 
You don't have to have the spirit of the world leading you back into sin. You don't have to have the spirit of the world that weighs you down and keeps you from living in the kingdom of heaven. In fact, when you turn and become like children, you are free to pursue the kingdom of heaven. You are free to live in the life that I have come to bring. And this is the freedom that I could see on the face of Claire in those paintings. That freedom that the, the world had no hold over her anymore. Whether it was those material goods and those material possessions that her family had many of. Or whether it was just simply that spirit of the world and trying to pursue herself. Trying to upbuild herself. She was free from all of that. Free to be able to pursue Jesus Christ. And then to share in his victory over the power of the world. Over the power of sin. Over the power of death. And so as we have this invitation to turn and become like children, we also have the example of St. Clair. That it might be taking a step out into that unknown, yet we know the one that we're pursuing, Jesus Christ. What exactly it might look like, what that path might particularly look like, that's the unknown. We might not know exactly what it's going to look like for us. And so we might not have some of that little fear of the unknown like St. Clair had at first in those paintings. But when we know the one who we're pursuing in Jesus, and we do so wholeheartedly, then Jesus will bring us to be free from the world and to share in his victory, to share in his life. And so as we have the example of St. Clair, we also ask our intercession that we would turn and become like children, to be free from the spirit of the world, to be free to live in the kingdom of heaven, and to share in the victory of Jesus Christ. We stand and turning like little children, we offer to our Father our prayers and our petitions. For members of the church throughout the world, may the Lord give us the grace to be like children, open and trusting in his word. Well, let us pray to the Lord. For leaders of nations, may God fill them with a spirit of humility and service. Let us pray to the Lord. For children everywhere, especially those who suffer abuse, neglect, or violence of any kind, and those who advocate for them. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered here today, may the Lord increase us in faith, hope, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. For the faithful departed, especially Mary Talley, may the Lord welcome them into his kingdom to rejoice with our Blessed Mother, with St. Clair, and all the saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving and eternal Father, hear these prayers that we humbly bring before you and answer them according to your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
As we proclaim your wonders, O Lord, in the Virgin, blessed Claire, we humbly implore your majesty that as her merits are pleasing to you, so too our dutiful service may find favor in your sight. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence, by which you call human nature back to its original holiness, and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Heaven and earth are holy and glory, O Son of the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son of the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirits upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us. Savior of the world. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Bernard our Bishop, Andrew his Auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, 
we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Come out to meet Christ the Lord. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed by partaking of this divine gift, we pray, O Lord our God, that by the example of the blessed Clare, bearing in our body the death of Jesus, we may strive to hold fast to you alone. Through Christ our Lord. Reminders for distribution for Holy Communion. You can be seated after the final blessing until the usher instructs you um, to, come, to come back for Holy Communion and bring everything with you as we won't be returning to our pews. And then the ushers will be spraying your hands with hand sanitizer around the communion. And then after you receive Holy Communion, you can head straight out to your cars or over to the polling place if you're going to take, place, take part in the primaries immediately following Mass, having some guidance from our Lord Jesus Christ at the same time. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.